But even as we set up a new cyber command and technology labs, even as we want to host inaugural Singapore Defence Technology Summit, I agree completely with Member Teo Ho Pin that we must never neglect to train the SAF as a conventional force against traditional threats and, as Cedric Fools pointed out, terrorism. Many of you agreed with that line. And we all know that we have finite land and we are building training facilities overseas, such as, such as in Australia, when we signed the Comprehensive Strategic Partnership. But at the same time, we must have world-class training facilities here. MP Vikram Nair talked about his childhood memories and how each time certain camps are taken away. There's a finite land. We understand the pressures. We do need a minimum base load of training camps, but we will maximize what we have. And we must guard against over-dependence on overseas training ground, as recent events have pointed out the dangers. And it's not possible for all our NS men to only train overseas because the bulk of our training is still conducted here, especially for the Army. Many of you here, I know, will be familiar, who have done NS, will be familiar with the Safti live firing here. You and I remember charging up Pinkang Hill for whatever reasons we were told to, and being trained at Fofo, the fortified hill. I left you right, remember, which the Hong Kong said, I love your wife, you know. <laughs> These are all in our memories. But the Safti live firing area was built in 1960s, 50 years ago, and as members here pointed out, the SAF has changed. Cities have changed. Terrains have changed. The world has changed. And members here ask, how is SAF going to respond to this? Is there new tactics? Is there new doctrine? Is there new equipment? We've recognized this. Not only do we need all this, the answer to all your questions is yes, we will need training grounds that reflect the missions and operations that the SAF will be called to conduct. So for the SAF to train realistically and effectively, we will build a new Safti city. Because even the peacekeeping and HADR missions are likely to be built, uh, to be conducted in built-up cities and infrastructure. The new Safti city will take a decade to complete and cost approximately 900 million. You have a handout, but with your permission, madam, I think it's easier for you to see what we're going to build in. Can I please show the video? Thank you. The Safti training area, with landmarks like Bengang Hill and Ishik No, is familiar to many generations of NS men. Over the next 10 years, the SAF will integrate the existing jungle training area with a new urban training facility called Safti City, which is made up of over 200 buildings. It will include multiple road networks, shop house clusters, basement car parks, high-rise interconnected buildings, a bus interchange and underground MRT station, and low-rise residences. It will also include a patrol chemical complex, warehouses, container parks and industrial buildings. The training areas around Safti City, such as Pengkang Hill in Pasilaba, will also be developed with the introduction of instrumented battle circuits, with realistic landscapes, interactive targets and battlefield effects. These circuits will incorporate camera and tracking technology to give soldiers instant feedback on how they perform. The future SAF training area allows training in areas of homeland security, counter-terrorism, urban operations, disaster relief operations, and island defence. Thank you, madam. Many details, but let me give you the broad gist. The idea of the new Safti city, what it wants to accomplish, is to allow any battalion to fight across different terrains successively, as they would do in real-life missions. So it will therefore have both urban and conventional terrain, and in the urban setting, low houses, high-rise buildings. In the open terrain, jungle, hills, and rivers to cross. But the signature change, because we're using technology, will be state-of-art training simulation technologies designed into operating environments. 
because we're building it from scratch, so we can do it. So there will be interactive targets, battlefield effects such as artillery attacks, so that our soldiers can train more realistically and have feedback about how well they perform. When it's completed, Safti City will take our NS training to a much higher level of realism and effectiveness. So for instance, for our soldiers who are involved in island defence operations, they will have, this Safti City will allow them to train in mock-up petrochemical complexes, warehouses, container parks and industrial buildings. Sector 2 will have high-rise and interconnected buildings, basement car parks, a bus interchange, an underground MRT station, which will be useful for counter-terrorism, and high-intensity urban operations, which members talked about. Sector 2 will also include urban rubble for disaster relief operations. In the areas surrounding Safti City, there will be three new instrumented battle circuits, and this will help small units train up their fighting skills because there will be video cameras, data analytics, to point to what your specific person did or did not do, and you'll give feedback on each soldier's performance. Different scenarios can be configured for both peacetime and conventional military operations. <clears throat> 